Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Solving One-Step Equations with Multiplication and Division. This is part one. So again, we're solving only single-step equations, but now instead of using addition and subtraction like in the last lesson, we will be required to use multiplication and division to solve these kinds of equations. But don't forget the big picture. The big picture is when you have an equation, you have an unknown variable that you're trying to figure out what the value of it is. And what you want to do is get that variable on one side of the equal sign by itself using the rules that we're talking about. And once you have it off by itself on one side, then we have solved the equation to figure out the value of that variable that makes sense. All right, so let's just look at the first one and we will talk about it. Let's say that our first, our first equation is two times g is equal to six. Now, what would be a practical example of a real life situation when you might need this? Of course, it's a quite simple equation, but this might be something like, uh, if I told you, uh, two times the number of golf balls in your house is equal to six golf balls. How many golf balls do you have in your house, right? Or it might be something like, if you were to double the number of golf balls in your house, you would have six. How many golf balls are in your house? So if we double the number of, if G is the number of golf balls in my house, if I double it, then I get six. That would be the equation I'm trying to solve and I'm trying to figure out what G is. But like in the last lesson, remember we did, when we had uh, addition going on, then sometimes we have to do the opposite to, do, to get the variable by itself. So when we were adding, we would do the opposite, which is subtraction to both sides. When we were initially subtracting, then we have to do the opposite, which is addition to both sides. So let me ask you a question. If multiplication is what is going on, what do you think we're gonna to do to both sides to, to, to get rid of it or to undo it? We'll do the opposite, which is division, right? So the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplication is division. And likewise, if we have division going on, we'll have to do the opposite of that, which is multiplication. So we're always doing the opposite operation in order to undo one side of the equation. Now in this case, we have two times some variable. So as we always do, I want to write it out again, without touching anything, without changing anything, like this, uh, sorry about that, and then on the right-hand side, equal to six, to give me a little chance to breathe here and not, not mess up my original equation. Now, let me ask you a question. If I'm multiplying, I have g here, and I'm multiplying it by two, I want to get g by itself, but multiplication is what is happening. So in order to undo it, I have to do the opposite. I have to, since I am divided, since I'm multiplying by two here, I need to do the opposite, which is dividing by two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a division bar on the left and a division bar on the right. Remember, a fraction bar is the same thing as division. And so I'll be dividing the left hand two by two. And if I do that to keep it balanced, I have to then divide the right side by two. So these, two equations, the one up here and the one down here with all the division uh, by two here, they are equivalent. Because I have done the dividing by two to both sides of the equal sign, then even though it looks different and it looks kind of ugly, it actually is the same exact equation as before. I have changed a little bit the way it looks, but because I did it in a balanced way, it is really the same equation as before. It looks a little different though, but it means the same thing. Now, before we figure out what happens over here, I wanna go off to the side. And let me ask you a question. If I have 10, right, and I divide by or multiply by 2, right, you know the answer to that's going to be 20. But what happens if I take 10 and multiply by 2, and then after I do that multiplication, I turn back, write it back around, and then divide by 2? If by order of operations, you know you have to do the numerator first because it has like invisible parentheses here. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the top and get 20, and then you're going to divide by the bottom. And 20 divided by two is 10. So what I'm trying to tell you is, if you start with 10 and then multiply by two, and then immediately divide by two, then you've done nothing. You multiply by two, then divided by two, you've undone the multiplication, and so you end up with 10, which is the number you start with. So if you start with a number, and then multiply, and then immediately divide, then you're back where you started, just like if I start with a number, and I add five to it, and then I subtract five from it, I've changed nothing, nothing has changed. So we can think about this situation here where we have 10 times two divided by two. We know it's going to, un it's going to completely, uh, uh, they're gonna annihilate or cancel with each other. So multiplying two divided by two, we get the number back that we started with. And so these twos, because there's one on the top and one on the bottom, we can think of them as canceling or dividing away. 
there's a two on the bot the, the top, and there's a division bar, which is the fraction bar, and then there's two on the bottom. And two divided by two is one. So we can think of it two ways. We can think of it as multiplying by two and immediately dividing by two, which gives us back what we started with. Or we can think about it as the two on the top and the bottom, they cancel, but they don't cancel because of magic. They cancel because it's two divided by two, which is one. And so anytime you get a one, it just disappears because one times 10 is 10, essentially. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because here, when we multiply by two, we're gonna turn right back around and divide by two. And so we can think about this as the two that's on the top canceling with the two that's on the bottom. And so what happens is that the only thing left on this side is just G. Just like taking 10 and multiplying by two divided by two, I get back what I started with. When I start with G and multiply by two and divide by two, then the only thing I have left is G because they annihilate each other, multiplying and dividing by two. You can also think of it as the twos canceling. On the right hand side, six divided by two is three. So we've now solved the equation because remember the goal is to always get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. And we can check it. Put three in for G, two times three is six. So you know that the value of G has to be three. And of course this was a simple equation. So if I told you that, you have, that if you double the number of golf balls in your house, you're gonna get six golf balls, then you know you must have started with three golf balls because if you double it, then you would get to six golf balls, right? So when we uh, have multiplication going on in an equation, we're going to divide by whatever number is in front to get rid of it. Notice that when we did the division, we have to take the entire left-hand side. We don't just divide one thing or the other. The entire left-hand side needs to be divided by two. The entire right-hand side needs to be divided by two. So when you uh, multiply or divide, you're doing it to the entire side, both sides of the equation. Now, as always, the first problem is the, is the longest because I have to talk more. The rest of these are gonna go a lot faster. Let's take a look at a slightly related problem. Let's say D divided by two is equal to two, right? Now we could leave it like this, but actually I want you to get in the habit of rewriting these. So this is D divided by two. I want you to write it as D divided by two, and that's gonna be equal to two, right? And the reason you'll see in just a second why, but when you see a division symbol like this, I want you to write it as a kind of like a fraction, which is also division. Now, whereas before we multiplied by two, so we immediately turned around divide by two to undo it and get G by itself. Here, we're taking the variable and dividing by two. How do you think we're going to undo division? We're going to do the opposite, which is multiplying by two. So if we're multiplying by two or any number, then we do the opposite, we divide by two. If we start out by dividing by two, which is what we've done here, then we have to do the opposite, which is multiplying by two. So we multiply the left-hand side by two, and we multiply the right-hand side by two. So we're multiplying by a whole number of two, but since this is a fraction, we're gonna write the two as two over one. Because remember, two over one is just the number two. So we're still multiplying by two, and we're still multiplying by two. Now on the right side, it's quite simple because two times two is four, right? But on the left-hand side, we've done this kind of thing before where we've canceled, uh, we've canceled um, uh, things here. So what's gonna happen is the two is gonna cancel on the top and the bottom, and you're gonna be left with D divided by one, which is D, and so D is gonna be equal to four. And we can check it. Four goes in here, four divided by two is two. Now let me dive a little bit deeper into this in case it's the first time you've ever seen it, because I want everybody to understand. Let me rewrite the left-hand side. D over two times two over one. You see what I did is I strike through the top and strike through the, because anything on the top and the bottom of a frat, when, when everything's multiplied like this, then whatever you see on the top, if you see something that's the same on the bottom, you could cancel through them. The reason you can is because two divided by two is one and that makes it disappear like that. But let's look at, at a little bit more detail. If you multiply these fractions, which we've multiplied fractions many times, D times two would be two D. I can rewrite it instead of D times two, I can turn it around and make it two times D. And that's multiplying the numerators. The bottoms, two times one is two. So you see, I end up in a situation where I have two times D divided by two. It's the same thing as before. 10 times two divided by two. The twos go away and cancel and I'm left with what I started with. Here, the two times D divided by two, I immediately multiply by two and then divide by two immediately and that kills the twos. They don't do anything because I immediately undid it. And also another way to think about it is the two on the top 
cancels with the two on the bottom, which is really what's happening is two divided by two is one, and one times d, the one can just disappear, and so you can say d. So instead of like writing it like this all the time, what we're going to do is multiply, and then even we don't really have to even combine it together. Anything we see on the top, we will cancel with something that we see on the bottom. And we'll do that kind of ahead of time, but just in the back of your mind, remember that you're just multiplying fractions and canceling. That's all you're doing. And the answer is four. Four divided by two is two, so we know the answer is correct. So now we've done one of each. We've done one equation with multiplication involved, and we had to do the opposite, which is division. And here we had an equation where division is going on, and we had to do the opposite, which is multiplication. But you can kind of see that they're both similar things that's happening. Now we can pick up the pace a little bit more. Let's say we have four times x is equal to 16. First, rewrite the problem. Four times x is equal to 16. So we have multiplication going on, right? Multiplication going on. So what do we do? If multiplication is going on, we're going to divide both sides by something. What are we going to divide by? We're going to divide by the four to undo the four that's over there because we want to get the x by itself, right? So we have x times four, and then immediately divide by four. We have a four on the top and the bottom. They cancel, which means they're dividing away. Four divided by four is one, and then one times x, we don't have to write the one anymore. It's just x, so x is left on the left. 16 divided by four is four on the right, and we again achieved our goal of getting x by itself. This is all to get to undo what's done over here to get x by itself. Check our work. Put x is four in here, four times four is 16, so we know the answer is correct. All right, the only way this is going to become, you know, super clear, super easy is just to do more of them. So let's continue. J divided by six is equal to three. Any division symbols that you see, I want you to get in the habit of writing it as J over six is equal to, sorry about that, equal to three, like this. And then what I want you to do is look, they're dividing by six here. We want to get j by, its six, by itself. So in order to undo this division, we change to multiplication and we multiply by six. And we multiply by six, but since it's like a fraction, we're going to really multiply it by six over one. So make it absolutely clear. You're multiplying by six, multiplying by six. And then you see, all right, what would happen if I were to multiply these fractions? We won't do it every single time, but let's do it this time, is that j times six, we usually write it as six j and put the number first. And then six times one is six. And then you're gonna have six times three is 18. So when you multiply it, then you can immediately see that the six will cancel with the six because it's common to the top and the bottom. They're dividing away, giving you only one. And then J is left over. And then 18 is what you have. Now, normally I'm not gonna rewrite it like this. I'm just gonna strike through the top of the six and the six. And you should now know going forward that any time we're multiplying fractions and we see something in the top and something in the bottom as a common number, we can just strike through them because they're dividing away and they're canceling. 18 is the answer. Check it. If we put in 18 divided by six, we do get three. So we then know that that is correct. All right, excellent. Now we get through the first few problems. Now we can just crank along and just get so much practice that you're gonna be fluent in what we're doing. Two times M is equal to 18. Two times M is equal to 18. Now, notice that I've been writing the dot between two times M, but we already know from simplifying expressions that we don't have to put the dot here. If I just write it as two M is equal to 18, this means multiplication. So in all of these problems I'm putting, uh, we have to put the division symbol here, but when we, I'm putting the dot here, you know, I put the dot here and so on, but I'm going to stop writing the dot. I want you to start seeing this as being the same as this. So two times M is 18. And so what I'm going to then do is we have to undo the multiplication. So we're going to divide both sides by something. What are we going to divide by? We have to divide by two to get rid of the two here, right? And we have a two on the top and a two on the bottom. They're dividing away. Two divided by two is one. That, that means it goes away because this makes one and then one times M is just M. So that's all that's left there. 18 divided by two is nine. Check your work. Put a nine in here. Two times nine is 18. We know the answer is correct. So literally solving equations, once you understand the process, is really the same. You're always doing the opposite thing. What about h? And let's divide that by the number 5 and say that the answer is 2. I always want you to write any division symbols is a fraction. h over 5 uh, is equal to 2. All right? So here we're dividing by 5. We have to undo that division by doing the opposite. We'll multiply by 5 
on both sides, multiply by five, but we're gonna write this five as a fraction, five over one, to help us visualize what's happening. And then we can see that we have a five on top and a five on the bottom. They're going to cancel. Five divided by five here is just one. If we did multiply, we would have five H over five, and the fives would cancel. So we don't have to do that. We can just cancel ahead of time. And so what we're going to have left over is H. Of course, it's divided by one, but that's not going to do anything. So you just have H is equal to 10. This is the final answer. Check your work. 10 divided by five is two. And that is the final answer. All right, only have a couple more. All right, let's take a look at the next one. What about seven times P? is equal to 35. Remember, there's no dot here, but it still means multiplication. So 7p, just rewrite it, 35. So what I'm doing here is I am multiplying by 7. So in order to undo it, I need to divide by 7. And so on the right-hand side, I also need to divide by 7. And then I notice I have a 7 on the top and a 7 on the bottom. They're dividing. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so that's why they disappear. And then what you have left is just the P, and then 35 divided by seven is five. That's the final answer. Let's check it. Five goes in here, seven times five, 35. And that's the final answer. All right, only a couple more problems. Here is number eight. What about, actually this is the last problem. Uh, B divided by three is equal to five. Any division symbols, I want you to write them as fractions equals five. We'll talk a little bit more about why I want you to do that in a second, but I want you to do that for every problem you see it. Now we're dividing by three. How do we undo that division by three? We do the opposite, multiply by three on both sides to keep it balanced. But this three, we're gonna write it as three over one because we have the fractions going on. It's a little easier to read what's happening. We have a three on the top and the three on the bottom. They divide away and cancel. And so all I have left is B, of course, B over one, but that one doesn't do anything. So B equals 15. Check your work. 15 goes to B, 15 divided by three is five. And that's the final answer. So now you can see why I want you to write all of your division symbols as fractions. Because if, if you do it like this, then it becomes much easier to see why these are canceling and why they are dividing away. Also, when we have large fractions with things on the top and things on the bottom, as we go forward, we're going to be canceling terms like all the time. So it's going to be something we do a lot. And so when we have uh, a division symbol, I'd like you to write it like this so that when we multiply, you can, you, can, you, you can draw on all of the fraction knowledge you know to know how to, to calculate the result and to cancel things. That's why I want you to do that. So here we have conquered solving one-step equations with multiplication and division. Super, super important. Uh, and so I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Just remember, anytime you're multiplying by the variable, you have to undo it with division. And when you're the table, having the variable divided by a number, you undo that with its opposite, which is multiplication. So addition is the opposite of subtraction. Multiplication is the opposite of division. We have to understand those pairs to solve equations. Solve all of these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills.